Why didn't Prince Harry stay in a palace rather than Althorpe last week? Maybe he is happier staying with people that are happy to be in his company. Prince Harry has always been known for his warm and approachable nature. He thrives in environments where he feels genuinely appreciated and loved. His laughter and smiles are more frequent when he is surrounded by those who cherish his presence. These moments of joy are not just fleeting. They are a testament to the kind of relationships he values. It's clear that Harry finds solace and happiness in the company of friends and family who accept him for who he is, without any pretense or judgment. Rather than stay in a place where relatives have snubbed him and say he is not welcome. The royal family, with its strict protocols and often cold demeanour, has not always been the most welcoming environment for Harry. The tension is palpable in many of their public appearances, and the distance between him and some of his relatives is evident. These strained relationships have only added to Harry's sense of isolation within the royal fold. It's no wonder he seeks refuge in places where he feels more accepted and valued. The constant scrutiny and judgment from his royal relatives have taken a toll on his mental and emotional well-being. The British media really need to move on. This is getting ridiculous. The relentless coverage and often negative portrayal of Harry in the British media have been nothing short of a witch hunt. Every move he makes is dissected and criticised, creating a toxic environment that no one should have to endure. The media's obsession with his life has reached absurd levels, and it's high time they let him live in peace. The constant barrage of negative headlines and intrusive reporting has only fueled the rift between Harry and the royal family. It's a vicious cycle that needs to end for the sake of everyone's sanity. He left you after you bullied him and his family out of the UK. The decision to leave the UK was not made lightly. Harry and Meghan faced relentless bullying and harassment from both the media and certain members of the royal family. The emotional toll of this constant negativity was immense, and they ultimately chose to prioritise their mental health and well-being. Their departure was a heartbreaking moment, but it was also a necessary step towards finding peace and happiness. The couple's decision to step back from royal duties was a brave and bold move, one that highlighted the need for change within the royal institution. Harry went where he felt loved and secure, with the Spencers. The Spencer family has always been a source of comfort and support for Harry. They have welcomed him with open arms, providing a safe haven away from the pressures of royal life. The bond he shares with the Spencers is deep and genuine, rooted in mutual respect and love. These family reunions are filled with warmth and joy, a stark contrast to the often cold and distant interactions within the royal family. Harry's connection with the Spencers is a testament to the power of unconditional love and acceptance. And most importantly, no one would brief against him. In the company of the Spencers, Harry can finally relax and be himself, without the fear of being betrayed or misrepresented. The constant leaks and negative briefings from within the royal household have been a significant source of stress for him. With the Spencers, he knows that his privacy will be respected and his trust will not be broken. These private family moments are a sanctuary for Harry, a place where he can find peace and solace away from the prying eyes of the media and the pressures of royal life, because the Spencers will always welcome him with warmth and open arms. The unconditional love and support from the Spencers have been a lifeline for Harry. Their warm embraces and genuine care have provided him with the stability and security he so desperately needed. In their company, he is not a prince bound by royal duties and expectations, but simply Harry, a beloved family member. This sense of belonging and acceptance has been crucial in helping him heal from the emotional wounds inflicted by his experiences within the royal family. The Spencer's unwavering support has been a beacon of hope and comfort for Harry, reminding him that he is loved and valued just as he is. He will always be welcomed by his family, his mother's family, the Spencer family. Over the weekend, the Mail decided to push a narrative that Prince Harry is desperate to come back to royal life and he's begging the Windsors to please let him come back, without Meghan, to do some ribbon cuttings because he's so bored with living in a Montecito mansion and banging his hot wife. As you can imagine, sources close to Harry shut down the story within 48 hours, insisting that of course Harry has no desire to return to the UK to live and work. The rumours had been swirling for a while, fueled by various tabloids and media outlets, suggesting that Harry was feeling homesick and contemplating a move back to his homeland. However, these sources were quick to clarify that Harry is very much settled in his new life in the United States. 
People Mag also got calls from the Sussex camp, who were eager to set the record straight. The spokesperson emphasized that Harry and Meghan are focused on their projects and commitments in the US, including their Archwell Foundation, which aims to uplift and unite communities through various initiatives, and they underlined that no, lol, Harry isn't coming back, but again, he would love to visit every so often. The spokesperson added a touch of humor to the situation, perhaps to lighten the mood and dispel any lingering doubts. They reiterated that Harry has found a new sense of purpose and fulfillment in his current endeavors, and while he cherishes his roots, his future lies elsewhere, but again, he would love to visit every so often. Harry has always maintained a strong connection to his British heritage and the causes he supported while he was a working royal. His visits to the UK are not just about personal ties but also about continuing his charitable work and maintaining relationships with the organisations he has long been passionate about, so he could do some work with his British charities. These charities hold a special place in Harry's heart, and he has expressed a desire to remain involved with them despite the geographical distance. His commitment to causes such as mental health, veterans' support and children's welfare remains unwavering. Harry's dedication to making a positive impact transcends borders, and his work with these charities is a testament to his enduring legacy of service and compassion. The security issue is fascinating to me, because Harry has made it perfectly clear that this is the biggest obstacle. The Windsors always conveniently forget this, until the Sussexes travel somewhere else where their security is guaranteed. Then suddenly, it's what about the security? Speaking of, from what I can tell, Harry's visit to the UK last week was done so under the radar. It was a quiet, almost stealthy return to his homeland, far from the usual fanfare and media frenzy that typically accompanies his appearances. Harry, dressed in casual attire, blended seamlessly into the bustling streets of London, almost as if he were just another face in the crowd. This low-key approach was a stark contrast to the high-profile visits we've seen in the past, he probably did not inform Buckingham Palace or the Met Police about his visit. The tell is that his visit surprised everyone, as evidenced by their hysterical reporting over the course of five days. The British tabloids were in a frenzy, churning out speculative headlines and sensational stories, trying to piece together the reasons behind his unexpected visit. Harry is not flatly required to inform BP and the Met Police of his visits. This lack of obligation allows him a certain degree of freedom, enabling him to move more freely and maintain a semblance of privacy, something he has often expressed a desire for. He only has to give them 30 days' notice if he wants temporary royal protection, which is judged on a case-by-case -case basis. This protocol is in place to ensure his safety while balancing his need for independence. It feels like Harry didn't notify anyone but the Spencer family about his plans to attend Robert Fellow's funeral. The funeral was a sombre affair, attended by close family and friends, and Harry's presence was a testament to his deep familial ties and respect for his late relative. And Harry reportedly stayed with his uncle, the Earl Spencer, at Althorpe. The Althorpe estate, with its sprawling grounds and historic mansion, provided a serene and private retreat for Harry. It's a place filled with memories of his mother, Princess Diana, and staying there likely offered him a sense of solace and connection to his roots. The Earl Spencer, known for his close relationship with Harry, would have been a comforting presence during this reflective visit. This under-the-radar trip highlights Harry's ongoing efforts to balance his public persona with his personal life, navigating the complexities of his royal heritage while forging his own path. During his stay, Harry also took the opportunity to engage in some low-profile charitable activities. He visited a local charity that supports underprivileged children, spending time with the kids and participating in various activities. These moments, away from the glare of the media, allowed Harry to connect with the community on a personal level, showcasing his genuine commitment to philanthropy. His interactions with the children were heartfelt and sincere, reflecting his passion for making a positive impact in their lives. In addition to his charitable endeavours, Harry also enjoyed some quiet moments of solitude. He was spotted at a quaint café, sipping coffee and reading a book, a rare sight for someone of his stature. These simple pleasures, often taken for granted by many, are cherished by Harry, as they offer him a break from the relentless scrutiny he faces. A leisurely walk in a nearby park provided him with a chance to reflect and recharge, away from the pressures of his public life. Family time was also a significant part of Harry's visit. He attended a small family gathering, where he shared meals and laughter with his relatives. These intimate moments with his loved ones are invaluable to Harry, 
offering him a sense of normalcy and belonging. The bonds he shares with his family, particularly the Spencers, are a source of strength and support as he navigates his unique position in the world. As his visit came to an end, Harry was seen boarding a plane back to the United States. He waved goodbye, a subtle yet poignant gesture, as he left behind the land of his birth once again. This under-the-radar visit, though brief, was filled with meaningful moments and quiet reflections. It was a reminder that despite the distance and the challenges, Harry's connection to the UK and his family remained strong. His journey continues as he strives to balance his royal heritage with his new life across the pond. This was too much for Sarah Vine to take. She pissed out this mail column, 